It's 4 o'clock on Friday, and thank goodness for that, and it's time for another exciting episode of Taxi's Quarantini Happy Hour. Woohoo, baby! Welcome to the big show. If you guys in the chat room could let me know that the tech is actually working today and that you're seeing me, that would be much appreciated. It worked! Yay! All right. I'm so excited. Oh, in that case, let's just hang out and listen to the band. <laughs> Man, those guys have been playing the same song for 10 years. Hello, everybody. Let's see who we've got there. Bob Gunnerfeld, John Pearson, uh, Kira Canyon, Rick Cabot, Podmore, Wind Chimes, Nancy Collell, Darren Moss, Andre Stepanian, and yes, we can talk fishing anytime you want, Andre. Uh, Martin Gravel, Alex Dillon, Daryl143, Jazz, Charles Tom, uh, Darren Moss. Did I already say hello to Darren? Uh, TJ Maki, Edmund Red, hello, Joseph Alonzo, Cass McKenty, Robert Valacor, Ann House, Michael Rashke, Rashke, Tony Salazzo. The gang is all here. At this point, I don't even care if other people, except for Peter Rahill, show up and Mark Reel. <laughs> anyway, good to see you guys. Welcome back to the show. Sorry about that stuff the other day. Wow. Um, hello, Element, Darren Fletcher, Jesse J. Peck. Yeah, you know, I think it all started. You know, I'm going to turn off the air conditioner. Um, Hello, Martin Gravel. Uh, oh, man. Computer's running hot today. We must have changed the setting. Oh, well. No big deal. Um, so what happened was, remember about, I don't know, three, four episodes, uh, we glitched out the chat room, just went to hell in a handbasket kind of mid-episode? I think that was the first sign that YouTube was changing some stuff on the back end quietly. And, uh, and then the other day, as it turns out, our, um, here, let me shut down one side of this. Um, all of a sudden, uh, we use Wirecast, which is like OBS. Those are the two big brands for broadcasting. They're interfaces. It's like, you know, studio in a box for video. Um, and all of a sudden, Wirecast would no longer talk to our YouTube channel. Um, and so Ariana and Bria and myself spent quite a bit of time trying to get that all worked out and it just didn't want to work. Um, <laughs> was I trying to wean you off quarantine yesterday? No, you know, I, I think about that three or four times a day because it does feel like we're getting maybe closer to being allowed to go back to the office. Um, man, I, I watched a, a briefing earlier with, uh, uh, Dr. Burks. I noticed uh, Dr. Fauci not as present anymore in those White House briefings. Um, and uh, she basically showed a bunch of charts. It's, it, she said, with the exception of Washington, D.C. and Chicago metro area, that much of the country was doing much, much better, which is great news. Um, it was... I can't remember. I know that the cities that opened, or the states that opened early, uh, Georgia and Florida, and everybody's like, oh my gosh, they're going to kill a bunch of people. Um, they're doing well. Um, and many other cities, uh, you know, hospitalizations are down, infections are down, deaths are down. So it does feel like uh, things are slowing down, which is good. Um, that's right. Zoom a dog says Michael Calabasas is not under L.A. Mayor Garcetti. I think you can open. You know, uh, like I said, I've been to the uh, thanks Zoom. I've been to the office several times during this uh, event, and I have noticed that uh, there are like there's a law firm in the front building of our office that they have like 50, 60 cars there every day. Um, I was there. I can't remember Monday, I think. And uh, I would say that 60 to 70% of the parking lot was full. Um, that's right. Uh, who said that? 
She also said taxi is essential, essential to us. I got to say, the staff has been doing such a great job uh, of doing all this work remotely, and I think everybody's kind of enjoying the fact that uh, if they want to kick back and you know and watch 15 minutes of the news on their break but they probably take a lot of breaks i don't know all i know the work is getting done everybody's operating beautifully and i'm very appreciative um they're opening bars in austin 25 percent capacity wow if anyone wants to come line dancing absolutely um so we'll see Anyway, uh, okay, so welcome to the show. <laughs> Finally got around to saying that, huh, six minutes in. Um, if you're new to our channel, I don't see anybody new. Of course, the new people don't often participate in the chat right away. So uh, hello, Jan Weilage. Um, if you're new to the show, please hit that red subscribe button so you can follow all of our broadcasts and give us a like. Would everybody run over right now and smash that like thing? Boy, we got... I want to say over 100 likes on the episode with Mystery Music Supervisor the other day. Um, I can't wait to have him back. He's just, I mean, he, he's become a really good friend of mine over the last few years, but just such a giver and so full of great information. Um, he could, like, teach that stuff if he wasn't busy all the time. Uh, all right, you guys, smash that button. Thank you. Um so I want to remind you that it says no show on Monday, May 5th. That's supposed to be no show on Monday, May 25th, because that is going to be Memorial Day. So, yeah, I'm really bummed out. There's a thing about a mile from our house. Uh, they take over a cemetery and do a great thing for Memorial Day every year, and they do flyovers, and uh, it's just very moving. Um uh, Deb and I are extremely grateful to all soldiers and uh, especially those who gave their lives so that we can live freely in America. And uh, I'm really bummed out that we won't be able to go anything to anything like that this year, but uh, they will not be forgotten. Um, so no show this coming Monday, and we will have a show on Monday, June 1st. And I've got a... Uh, um, a really great music library owner booked for the show, um, barring any disasters. You never know, you know, he could get hit with a bunch of requests and sorry, you know, but uh, hey, Robbie Hancock. Um, hopefully, you know, it, it should all go fine. I think it will. So I'm excited about that. Um, let's see, I talked about YouTube. Okay, so it looks like that's all been fixed. Oh, I want to do, uh, do you, are you guys up for more of those live member calls? You seem to enjoy that more than I thought you would the other day. Turned out kind of good, all things considered. So uh, let me know in the chat room. Uh, yeah, we're actually sending out an email with a couple of archive shows uh, in the email that you guys will get on Sunday, I think. It's either Sunday or Monday that you get that email. Um so Peter Rahill and Justin Mather say sure on the calls. Zuma says, call me. I want you to check my top line of a new demo. I'm afraid that if I do that for one person, then I'm going to have to do it for a bunch of people. And I don't want to be having people playing me music from there in here. But um, phone calls were fun. Uh, call Tamara. Haven't heard her voice in a while. <laughs> uh, Alex Dillon says, yeah, psychic hotline. Yeah, that was fun. The psychic hotline. I sound like a teacher, huh? <laughs> God forbid. I hated pretty much every teacher I had from kindergarten until the day I graduated college after five years. But I've got to say, you know, like in my second year of college, I got a job working in the studio with major acts all the time. So it was pretty tough to go to those classes. All right. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, um, Ariana let me know that she's gotten a bunch of your uh, uh, top lines uh, or melody things for the show we're doing with Jason Bloom. 
in six days on Thursday of next week. So that's going to be fun. I'm really curious. Uh, first of all, I don't have to do anything. I can just turn on Jason. I'm going to send him the disco list and uh, I can just kick back. I could like actually have a quarantini during the quarantini happy hour. You know what? One day, maybe on the last episode of this, oh, it breaks my heart to even say that. But when we do the quor- the last episode of the quarantini, we should actually um, circulate a recipe for quarantinis in the email that goes out to everybody. And we should all drink quarantinis. Um, let's get faced. Sounds like fun to me. Okay. Oh, okay. So this morning, um, I was forwarded an email um, from a member who's not going to renew. And I think her issue might be one that other members share. Um, she gave me permission to read her email on air, which I really appreciate. Um, I'm going to leave her name and her band's name out of it. Um, just out of courtesy. I, I'm sure she'd be fine with it, but, you know. Um, anyway, it reads, Dear Michael, thank you for your email and the many years I've been a taxi member. I'm assuming she means the renewal emails that went out a day or two ago. Um, I first joined Taxi when I was the composer for an ambient duo. Um, we attended the Road Rally, took the suggestions to heart, attended many online forums, I guess she means the Taxi Forum, and had 18 of our instrumentals forwarded, but no action ever occurred. You know, 18 forwards, is, is it's not nothing, it's certainly a good sign, but not surprising. Um, after the duo broke up, I continued solo and had another seven forwards, but still no action resulted. I've received accolades elsewhere, nominations and awards for my compositions, yet somehow have never had any real luck with Taxi in almost 10 years. Between the subscription and submission costs over that time, I probably have spent between seven and $10,000. So I think it's time for me to move on and invest the funds in other means of distribution of my music. Um, one question. I still have one submission pending of four piano pieces. What happens to that submission without my renewal? Continue or Best of luck in your continued success with Taxi. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, Let's see, what was the question? Oh, yeah, if you still have, I'm, I'm sure that uh, member service has answered this for you, but yes, if your membership runs out, but you already made a submission, um, that submission is treated like you're still an active member. We don't go, oh, not a member anymore. We're not going to listen to that. Uh, we already took your money. It's in the system. We're going to treat it like you're still in the system because you are. I mean, you're just not an active member that can submit. But So there's the answer to that. So, yeah, I was, I was, I mean, I've heard stuff like this before. Um, it always bums me out, of course. You know, I, I want everybody to get deals. Um, and it bums me out even a little more. When people are getting forwards, I, knew, I know they're doing something right. But obviously, we can't control the outcome once it leaves, uh, the, you know, taxis computers and goes to the folks who requested it. Now... We've had people over the years that say, oh, I get forwarded all the time and I never hear anything. I'm wondering if you guys actually forward the music to anybody anywhere. Uh, I think those of us in the chat room, certainly, you know, you regulars uh, know that that couldn't be further from the truth because we all know people that have gotten deals, uh, some of them many, many, many deals through Taxi. So clearly the stuff is being forwarded to the intended party. Uh, or intended recipient. Um, also, if you go on our forum and see the people in there posting about their deals, those wouldn't take place if we weren't forwarding the music. So, but I don't, I don't think she was insinuating that here. But, um, so let's say that she was a member for a total of 10 years. I did go and look at the database. She'd had several different accounts over the years. Um, so I just roughly added them up uh, this morning while I was still in bed with my laptop. Uh, so let's say she was a member, I think it was roughly 10 years, and let's say she paid about 200 bucks a year on average because most of those were, were renewals. I saw that she'd referred somebody and got the $100 discount. So if you figure she paid 300 bucks for the first year, got the $100 off, then all her years were $200 years. So she spent $2,000. And she said she 
thinks that she spent somewhere between seven and ten thousand um, dollars. So I averaged that, uh, or you know, look, there's a three thousand dollar spread there. So I added fifteen hundred to the seven thousand, and I came up with let's say she spent eighty five hundred bucks in total. Um, that means this is the part that freaks me out a little bit, and I'm not angry with her. It's just she spent about $6,500 on submissions, if this math is right. It's not perfect science, but you know, I'm roughing things, but I think it's pretty close. So $6,500 on submissions, which means, and these numbers I think are rounded, um, but you know, rounded pretty closely. That means that she averaged 130 submissions per year at $5 each. That means that she was averaging 10.8 Three, three, or as we like to say, rounded up to 11 submissions per month, about two and a half per week. To me, that sounds like a lot of submissions. And, and we often see that kind of submission enthusiasm early in people's memberships. Um, it, it's very tempting. They see a lot of listings. Oh, yeah, I think I've got something. And I think it might have been John Pearson or Cass McKenty that said... Uh, who was it? Somebody... Oh, now I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, we, we do see what I've always called, literally since the beginning of the company, new memberitis. People get tempted by a lot of stuff. and Oh, that they will take something and, you know, if uh, the listing asks for, you know, a song about people going out dancing... Um, to celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day, okay? And somebody has a song that has the words dancing shoes in it. They will submit that because it talks about dancing. <laughs> the theme has nothing to do with what the listing is actually looking for, but because dancing shoes and dancing are somehow very tangentially related, people will make those... That's what they do in their first year oftentimes. And then they get frustrated with Taxi because they've submitted a ton of material and they don't get any action. And then two years later, they come back and renew. They join the forum. They join the chat on Taxi TV. They learn from their fellow members and they go, yeah, I, I was nuts. I way oversubmitted and I was submitting stuff I never should have submitted back in the day. And uh, there you go. Martin Gravel giving us a bunch of shamrocks in the chat room. Um, Mark Real says, taxis fees are like taking a weekly music lesson to me, but less expensive. Uh, and uh, I think I saw Cass say $10,000 to start a new business is, is nothing. That's true. You know, people forget that they're starting a business. Heck, if you just wanted to open up a hot dog stand, one of those carts like you see in the corner in New York City, the cart is probably, you know, six to $10,000. Um, and whatever else you need, licenses, inventory, got to buy those hot dogs and buns, lots of pickles and mustard. Um, yeah, they look at you funny in New York. If you put ketchup and mustard on a hot dog in New York, they're liable to throw your hot dog back in that vat of hot dog juice and water that's been there for 10 years. Um, uh, Andre Stepanian says, like you said yesterday, 100 forwards on drone submissions and no placements. Yeah, you know, here's the thing is, you know, you bring up an interesting point, which I believe might be the key to this lady's situation, which is she did ambient stuff, does ambient stuff. Um, somewhere in here it said that. Um, yep, she was an ambient in an ambient duo, and I'm assuming she still does a lot of ambient stuff. Okay, so... We get a ton of submissions for ambient stuff, and it's not competitive. We don't say, oh, this one's better than the last one, so I'm going to take that last one out of the bucket and forward this one. It's anything the screener hears and goes, yep, this meets the two criteria. It's on target stylistically, and it's good enough, therefore it gets forwarded. Well, there have been times where we've gotten 200, 400, 500 submissions for ambient drones um, and found, you know, 30% of them, or sometimes 50% of them, were for forwardable. Is that a word? Forwardable. Anyway, 
Uh, and, and like I've said before in the show, we have to break it up into batches to send out to the recipient because we don't want them to open up a folder and see a, a playlist that's literally like, you know, 20 feet long if you keep scrolling. Um, so uh, they get a lot of stuff. Uh, there are a lot of forwards. They get a lot of stuff. They probably don't need 200 drones. They probably need somewhere between 5 and 20 drones. So when they get to the number that they feel like I've got enough, then they probably don't listen. They'll probably save the folder somewhere on a, you know, like an outboard hard drive or something. Um, but they don't want to put 200 drones in their catalog. That would just look overwhelming to anybody that, you know, does a search on their stuff. So drones, um, I don't want to say they're easy to get forwarded. People are very capable of making really good drones, so a lot get forwarded. So that's part of the problem. I mentioned a, another member who we're very fond of. His name is Carl, and I won't give his last name, but Carl had like four or 500 forwards over a period of three or four years or something, and nothing, crickets, same situation as this lady. And when I looked at his account, and we literally printed out pages upon pages upon pages of his stuff from his submission history, much of it was drones. So that was part of the problem. Now, depending on when this lady was a member, here's another part of the problem, which I've mentioned previously on a taxi TV, and that is there was a network about five years ago or so, um, a network that was building an in-house music library and they reached out to us and they were running listings they use a lot of drones um, and they reached out to us and started running listings and you probably remember those listings they said for a network's in-house music library and uh, we started sending them music they were effusive they loved what they were getting from us our members were just hitting the nail on the head everybody was happy on all sides of that fence um, about four, five, six months into that scenario, one day we find out that the executive vice president who is in charge of building that library, he, uh, they bumped him up to be in charge of like production of TV. So he was no longer like a big deal and somehow involved in the building of that music library. Well, I thought, you know, not such a terrible thing. Um, we knew his assistant. She was the one that was doing the intake and all that stuff and ordering it into files and everything and just constantly relaying back to us that everybody at the network was so impressed with they were, were getting. Um, a drone Zuma is like, oh, you know, that kind of creepy, almost uh, non-melodic stuff that can be really simple but somehow just makes your skin crawl. Not... Not so much like a horror flick, but it's something that makes you a little sweaty uh, and makes you worry. But not something that necessarily means, oh my God, something you know, somebody's going to come out of the shower with a knife. Doesn't necessarily mean that. Okay, so that gentleman got promoted to a much higher position, and all of a sudden uh, they weren't running any listings, and we started getting calls from our members going, well, what's going on over there? And finally, uh, after about six months of us checking in with the assistant who was putting all the music in files and com constantly complimenting us, she said, as of right now, the project is dead in the water. Somebody else will get assigned to this project. We've got too much as library built to just kill it. But they never, ever proceeded forward with it. So it could have been that this lady who wrote the letter, you know, maybe of her 17 previous forwards, maybe nine of them were for that thing. And we felt terrible. You know, I mean, at one point we looked at, gee, should we refund $5 submission fees to everybody? But we ran the listing. It's a very legitimate company that you all know. Um, we ran it in good faith. They acted in good faith. It wasn't like they, you know, did something untoward. It's just the guy got promoted and nobody else picked up the ball. So, you know, who knows? Someday we could get a call. Hey, by the way, we just found a file, you know, with 3,000 pieces of music that are awesome from you guys. Could you imagine how many of those pieces have been signed elsewhere by now? Anyway, it was kind of heartbreaking that they didn't go ahead and uh, finish up that library because it would have been a really good library and it would have gotten a ton of use by that, uh, 
thing. Hit one by, uh, oh, we're talking about those drones. Yeah, I've got one of those. That's what I'm doing this weekend. I told my wife, I'm breaking out my little DJI and I'm gonna fly that sucker around the neighborhood. Piss off my neighbors. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I don't wanna try and twist this lady's arm and convince her to remain a member. But my guess is that the stuff she was, you know, 25 forwards in total is not that many. Can you guys chime in in the chat room actually and say, um, have we ever considered creating a taxi music library? Yeah, but then we would be a publisher and then we would be charging you for a membership and submission fees and taking a piece of your publishing, which doesn't feel kosher at all. So yeah, we considered it. <laughs> Um, can you guys tell me from your experience, like how many, if you think 25 forwards is like, well, yeah, she should have gotten a deal somewhere. Taxi records. You mean tax records? The thing we get from the accountant at the end of the year? Zuma says, clearly she should move on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to twist her arm otherwise. I, you know, I don't like breaking hearts. I really don't. John Pearson says, nowhere near enough forwards for a deal. Yeah, you know, it goes back to the old thing of my stuff got forwarded in the mind's eye of the people who get forwarded. And I can't blame them for feeling like this. They imagine somebody sitting on the receiving end going, where's that, you know, stuff from taxi? I can't wait. And they're going to open that file and play one, play two. Oh, listen to that. There's what's her name. Oh, that's great. I'm going to call her right up and sign her up. Um... Yeah, and remember, when we forward stuff, we're not always the only source they're getting the music from. Um, Elements, uh, John Pearson says, no, we're near enough forwards for a deal. Element Studio says, I'm pretty sure I had like 100. Um, Ann House says, it takes persistence. Pierre says, close but no cigar. Um, Rick Cabot Podmore says, I'd say it depends on the deal. Um, Mark, Rao, Mark Real says, consider the odds and it's apparent. Um, and she should consult the peer-to-peer -peer forum. Um, should she have? Yeah, she may have. She said she did spend some time in the forum. Um, yeah, it is heartbreaking, Cass. You know, I, I didn't look at that email and go, oh, you know, none of that. I, I actually, you know, have, you could hear my heart breaking across the room. And I did appreciate the tone with which she wrote the email. Really appreciated that. Um, Edmund Red said, it depends. Some people are luckier. Got my first deal after three submissions. The first two were returned. Um, oh, also somewhere in one of these things, I don't know if it's in this letter or part of the email chain, um, she did say something like, I feel like I'm just playing the lottery. That part upset me because, as I've said a million times on the show, it's not a lottery. A lottery is pure chance, all right? Um, it's more like playing sports. Uh, the better you are and the more often you play, the better your odds become of winning. So, you know, could you affect... The amount that you win in gambling, I'm sure that there are people who do. I mean, certainly card counters would win more often. And there are plenty of books out there and websites dedicated to gambling smarter, playing cards better. Yeah, those things might happen. Um, but it's not a lottery. With a lottery, you have no control over whether you win or you lose. With taxi, it depends. Are you making good choices in your submissions? Are you not taking pot shots at, you know, at, at stuff, those dance and shoes listings? Um, let's see, I just saw the word golf fly by. Peter Rahill says, the golfer's motto, the more I practice and play, the luckier I get. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rick Cabot Popmore says, my last forward was very enlightening from the screener feedback. Um, Zuma says, I'm a new member and have seen children, so G requests. 
I don't know what that means. <laughs> Look at your typing. <laughs> you type like my wife texts. All of us on the staff have, have learned how to uh, translate my wife's texts because they're pretty hysterical sometimes. Man, a rabbit. I, I'm working with the curtains open today so I can see nature. And a bunny rabbit just ran across my patio. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Pearson says, it's a combination of great music, great title, fitting listing, and a bit of luck. Song title is so important to get the get a forward to a deal. It really is. <laughs> Peter Rahel says, Michael, you need to go play golf. That it jumped out at you as evidence, probably. Am I allowed to play golf? I don't even know. Darren Moss says, reposting, it's a hard one. I've sent a few submissions over the years where I thought, this seems like a long shot, not close enough, and they got forwarded, one became a deal. Yeah, it happens. Darren Fletcher says, I'll say the more I apply what I've learned at the road rally from the forums and the screeners and taxi TV, I get more forwards. And that's why we do it all. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, you guys are talking about Quasi Wabbit. Uh, that Quasi Wabbit, uh, I think the coyote eliminated the rabbits in the yard for a while. And uh, now I've seen this young, it looks like a you know, couple months old. It's not very big. It sits up on its hind legs and eats the flowers off of the plants on the side of our hill. Uh, but I can't uh, relocate the rabbits. Uh, Zuma Dog wants to know, question, how much is the custom, eva custom evaluation? Is it different, better than the feedback on a submission? Yeah, it is. Um, it's not in response. You don't submit those in response to a particular listing or request. You just send it in. Um, and I think you can include a note that says, you know, can you let me know how my top line is? Um, you can ask for them to look at specific things. Um, we have certain, uh, a small group of screeners who are qualified to do what we call the custom critiques. They're much more elaborative. They take a lot of time. Actually, we charge 20 bucks for those things. The screeners get paid 30 bucks an hour. It's not uncommon for a screener to spend an hour on a custom critique. Um, so we lose money on those. That's why you don't see me marketing it a lot. But I know that there is great value in them and a lot of people like it. Oh, check this out. I'm drinking one of the original non-sugar-free rock stars. Not very cold, I might say. Excuse me. Debbie Ward says, just joined for my second year in March. Yay, welcome back. Question, is 215 submissions and 40 forwards look like an average taxi member? Honestly, there's no way to judge by that because different people submit at different uh, velocities, if you will, you know, more often than others. Um, some people submit only to stuff that's really high bar, like, you know, big orchestral trailer um, instrumentals. That's going to be a way harder forward. Or country songs for a huge star in Nashville. Um, those are tough forwards to get. Um, whereas if they ask for, you know, like singer songwriter instrumentals, which means, you know, something acoustic -y and pretty simple that a lot more people can do and can create high quality versions of that, that stuff's just easier to get forwarded on. Um, Zuma says, okay, oh, custom critiques are the best, just saying. And Zuma says, okay, John. Um, all right, who shall I call? Ooh, I need to open um, the taxi database to do this. Man, there are animals all over the patio. A 
Okay, I've got the subscriber window open. Turnaround time on a custom critique is variable. Um, it's hard to say because we only use a few people to do the customs because they're specially trained for that uh, expertise. Um, we use the people that are multi-genre people who are really good communicators um, for the customs. And, uh, you know, we might have them assigned to do a batch of five or six customs in a day. Um, and then all of a sudden we get a great listing that has to be turned around in 24 or 48 hours and it's all hands on deck from those guys who are multi-genre specialists. So um, we might pull them off the custom. So it, it varies. Earthquake coming? Oh no. Open my door and take two of each what? <laughs> I missed the top part of that. I'm going to have to scroll up. Uh, TJ Maki says, I'm hearing the kind of submission matters. It does. How would submitting to a dramedy cue compare to a hip-hop song? Um, it, it depends on the individual listening. I hate to generalize. I'm not being coy or anything. It's just, you know... Dramedy cues, um, they're in high demand. They're always in high demand and nobody's ever complained that we've forwarded them too many. A hip hop song, you've got to have great word flow, you know, and you got to sound very cutting edge. You can't sound like last year's hip hop um, you know, or 1995's hip hop. So it depends. They're just, there's no easy answer to this. Um, Edmund Red says, can we have Bobby Osinski on again to talk uh, on the show, talk about websites for musicians, SEO and social media for composers, not bands? Um, I can. I tried to get Bobby on a couple of times recently, and he, he's just really super busy. Um, coincidentally, though, the email that's going out Sunday or Monday that tells you that we're not doing a taxi TV on Monday, one of the two videos that is in that email for you to rewatch is Bobby Osinski again. So you were like reading my mind, Edmund. Uh, road rally still happening this year. We want it to, you know, we're literally taking it day by day. It's a, it's a topic of frequent discussion. And, uh, you know, it, if the mayor on, you know, in July, he still says, sorry, you can't put a thousand people in a ballroom or, 500 people at a bar if all these restrictions are still going to be in place and, and we can't find out a week before the road rally because the the planning that it takes to put one together and the number of people that we book like a hundred different screeners i mean a hundred different um panelists mentors and teachers and one-to-one -one mentors all that stuff even to get those people to commit if the mayor is still touch and go on this thing and getting people to fly in but it is also still how many months away? Um, like six months away, right? So we'll see. Bob Gunnerfeld already got my plane tickets. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the hook with the hotel. I, I think that our uh, if we can't do it, I think that the uh, force majeure clause of the contract lets me out of the deal. I used to think I was on the hook for like 93000 if we defaulted and didn't come. It's not. It's like $186,000 I would have to write a check to the hotel for. But I'm pretty sure that under these circumstances, the contract would be null and void. I sure hope. Um, every time I talk to them, it's like, look, they don't want me to cancel. I don't want to cancel, but they don't want to talk about that subject either. I wonder if episodic scripted television will return before the road rally can take my can take place. I would think so. Honestly, I've just noticed like in the last two or three days, it's like 
the, the government seems to finally be coming to its senses. When you've got Dr. Deborah Burks on TV showing these charts that basically go more like this, there's the peak, starts to come down, and then goes. Um, I think so. Yeah, we're still going to be quarantining, quarantining next week. Yeah, if you're talking about the quarantine shows, yes. Uh, question so jason bloom will be there next thursday yes he will um and i know that ariana has put together a disco file with all the stuff okay so let's call some people for questions wow i said that 10 minutes ago and i didn't do it who would like me to call them and where is my phone Jay Morgan says, do you know a record label for me to contact to show my songs to? <laughs> uh, you guys answer that one for me, would you? Um, airlines do not practice social distancing because it bites their bottom line. My wife just flew home from uh, Tel Aviv on Monday, and uh, they were practicing social distancing. Dan Weber wants to know, hi, Michael, would you call me for a question? I would be happy to, Dan. Um, uh, are you in S South Carolina? Is that you, Dan? <laughs> the co-pilot hangs out the window. That's right, no hanky-panky in the restrooms either. Dan Weber, are you in South Carolina? Answer me, Dan. Peter Rahill says, yeah, he's in South Carolina. All right, so hopefully I'm calling the right uh, Dan Weber. By the way, I really like South Carolina. It's a lovely state. Little humid, but very, very pretty. Six. Hello. Hi, Michael. Hey, Dan. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good, thanks. All right. You are live and on the air. How exciting is this? That's oh, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Michael. So, what can I do for you? Well, uh, first of all, Michael, you've done a great job with everybody I've seen on yeah, that are members of Taxi. Uh, I've never talked to you before, but uh, this morning we've had a, a a listing for rap rock songs okay and, and uh, I was wondering if considering the coronavirus lockdown uh, could that possibly be popular the, the rap rock songs could that possibly be popular for film and TV uh, in the near future, because I, I don't know, I just I just feel like rap and rock just brings people together. It, it always always has since I've heard it from in the eighties when uh, I've heard some of the rap and rock D, uh, Run DMC from the right. from the beginning. Yeah, I would love to hear that. Uh, rap and rock would be popular in the future. Have you heard anything about that? I haven't, and I have no way. Um, excuse me, rock star makes me burp. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. 
Sometimes I talk to library owners pretty frequently and I'll ask them, so what are you guys getting a lot of requests for right now? And then I'll talk to another library owner a week later and they're so divergent as to what they are getting requests for. Um, and the reason is that library owner A may be doing 40% of their business with a particular show that uses a lot of music because they've had a long relationship. The same thing could be true for Library B that also has a relationship with a show that's an ongoing thing. Um, so the need is more dictated by who they do business with and to a pretty large extent, I, I guess if you had to make kind of a, a, a sweeping generalization, I would say that whatever is popular on Spotify, whatever is popular on the radio and is currently popular with the music listening public, generally speaking, younger people, because um, they seem to consume more music, at least that's what the industry says. Um, those are the things that get asked for. I, I have no way of knowing if, if rap rock, because it brings people together, will be something that they'll ask for or not. I just think uh, that uh, rap rock is is a great way to bring the rockers and the hip hop people together because hip hop has been so popular on in film and TV. I would just love for some way for us to reach out to each other and find some way to make it work because it. It would work not only for reality TV. I don't know if it'd work for reality TV, but I believe that rap rock would work great for uh, uh, sports or something like that. And that's actually it, it just it yeah. just brings people together. I I I've always loved to to uh, rap a little bit. Uh, it's it's just it just it seems like a good way for me to have an outlet in this business and hopefully uh things might go in that direction i don't know i'm i don't either i'm just I... being trying to be hopeful michael yeah being hopeful is always a good thing i just don't know i have no way um i don't think that the people who decide which music goes into TV shows, sit around a, cof or a conference table going, what kind of music do you think would bring people together? And they all give their opinions and mm -hmm. they settle on rap rock and go, okay, yeah. so let's start looking for a lot of rap rock for our shows. Yeah. It's really so specific to the scene and the producer. It's, it's sad. It's sad that that's not the idea to... Uh, to uh, to have something positive come out of well, they, our... they do, but it, it may not be in the form of rap rock. It could be in the form of any mm -hmm. genre, you know. Um, but as our mystery music supervisor so eloquently said the other day, at some point I realized I wasn't in the music industry anymore, and I realized I was in the film and TV industry. So as far as pitching music for sync goes that that's the reality of it is we as music creators are here to serve the scene and when i say we i mean you <laughs> uh, no, but, I, but I know. I our, know. our job as the intermediary is to you know give them what they feel will serve the scene they don't sit around and think man what kind of music uh you know will bring people together so much yeah. as you know maybe the lyric content That's of a song so sad. well it's just it's the way it is I, you know i know i know michael but i mean you you are you bring people together and you you have uh, inspired me to uh to write music write instrumentals but i would just i would love for i mean these music supervisors like the one you had Monday, they care. They yeah. and I care. I care, Michael. And with the, I mean, with the uh, rap rock, 
I think it could change the political situation. It's just... I would I have to know. disagree with you on that, Dan. <laughs> I don't think I don't, know. I don't think a certain. I, don't know. I, I, I appreciate no, your no. enthusiasm and your commitment to yeah. rap rock, but I'm not sure well, anything as simple as music could change the political situation. But, you it, know, you it, would, it might though. I I I believe I would like to think positively for some for things like that. I mean the uh, the. Uh, positive piano solo piano instrumentals and right that taxi has been asking for lately that's great that's great but we've been there before michael and i would i would just love for taxi to lead the way in some kind of uh resolution in this political nightmare that we're in honestly right? uh, honestly people have asked me to do that be you know that sort of thing before and as much as i'm really truly flattered that people think that i have that kind of power or that much I, voice i don't and, and you know what here's an observation and then i gotta move on to the next caller but the observation is that after 9 11 you saw um both sides of the aisle from both sides of uh, both houses of congress standing on the steps of the capitol building in unity um, America was, at least for a short time, yes. brought together in political short lines time. across yeah. because of that tragic day on September 11th. And here we've had this COVID virus. And I thought, well, you know, if anything good come, will come from it, it will bring people together in D.C. And it didn't. So if something that killed close to 100,000 Americans so far... Um, and was such a you know a huge historical event in our country's history. If that couldn't bring people together in D.C., I know. I know that little old Michael that's, Lasko that's from Texas. That's the whole reason why I'm, I'm saying this, Michael, is that it's it's sad. I've watched the whole deterioration of uh, the political situation, and I just wish I could do something about it. And I know you do too. And I know you have a business to run, and I know things I wish uh, people would are be, not controlled by you. They're not. And uh, but, my only but comment you about you have an influence, and I was hoping that maybe I could have an influence in this business. And I'm hoping well, I, things will change. I appreciate things that. Things will change. Try going on. Yeah forums and Facebook pages everywhere you can find them and see if you can start a little fire. But on, on political note, I just have one comment, which is I don't care which color you are, if you're red or blue, <laughs> which side of the aisle uh, politically you fall on. I just wish more people were better informed. It really freaks me out when people just yeah. read a headline which was crafted to influence people um, and they and they don't read the full article. They don't know the facts, and they are judging candidates or presidents on either side of the aisle just by reading a headline. That, We're all waking up to that fact, aren't we, Michael? Uh, yeah, I've everybody's been, everybody's realizing that the news is slanted in their direction, and things are not as they used to be the things have changed don't you think we, um, we've you know what i honestly think it was kind of always like this but 24-hour news cycles and twitter and facebook um all the social media have, i think the politics are largely the same it's the amount of communication that has changed what we're aware of in politics yeah Anyway, I got to move on because I've only got yeah, six more minutes I left on the show. I'm sorry, I I didn't mean to get political, but I mean that type of music would just uh, give me an outlet to say something positive in the political realm. Dan, that's say, all I'm saying. Make the music, say it anyway, and just put the music out there everywhere you can and hope that it catches fire somewhere. But it's your well, job to make music that resonates with a lot of people. We've got a lot of positive taxi members, and hopefully I'll come out with something, and maybe somebody else will come out with something, and we can uh, yep. come together with this stuff. And 
music is the rap rock would be just uh, a start for me to yep all right, Listen, I gotta. Mike, I, I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. okay. I gotta run because we've only got five minutes of show left at this point. I gotta get another caller in. We'll get to that point, Michael. I'm I'm sure. All right. Thanks, Dan. Great to talk to you. Thank finally. you, Michael. Be well. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Who's next? Jay Morgan. Um, I, I'm guessing you're not a taxi member and not in my database, so. Can't grab your uh, phone number. And to just say, you know, how can I get my music to a record label? That's like 101. Um, there, there's a lot to learn. Yep, Zumadog says, not up to taxi. It's a byproduct of the marketplace. Dan equals make that political rap rock. Uh, who wants me to call him next? Uh, Joseph Alonzo. Michael, call Michael? You mean call you, Joseph? <laughs> I'm not sure. What the heck you mean? All right, Joseph, does your phone number start with 206? Jay Morgan, you've been a singer for 23 years and writes amazing songs. I've been a golfer for 40 and I still suck. It's not the amount of time. It's what you put into it. Joseph Alonzo, get back to me. Let me know if you're the 206 Joseph Alonzo that I'm looking at uh, in my database. Oh, what the heck? I'm calling. I'm calling. <laughs> no, you're not 206. Oh, man. Well, now, I've only got two Joseph Alonzos showing up. Um, and I spelled it right. A L O N S O. Yeah, what? You're the 206? The show's going to be over in three minutes. We need to resolve this phone number situation. <laughs> yes, okay, I'm calling you. I hope it's the right Joseph Alonzo. <laughs> Star 67. Um, is this you? It's me. Hi, Joseph. Uh, can I stop it? It's Michael. Can you turn off your computer? So. Or your your volume? Oh. Yeah, what? Oh, you, you too. Oh, I see. You're a little later. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So can everybody else. So watch you what you say. Different. Sorry? You sound different. No, it's me. <laughs> oh, there we are. Yeah, you... you <laughs> Anyways, um, you've, you've I got remember... Mute your, you, Yes, I'll keep it short. I'll no, keep it short. no, mute, mute your computer. Hold on. Just mute your computer. Turn down the volume. I got you. All right. <laughs> I'll keep short. I promise. Um, no. Uh, when it comes to sending in a, um, first of all, I remember a taxi years years ago, and I'm glad to be back. Great. Um, I think it's a good tool. I think the critiques are good, and like I think what it's all about is just being really specific and reading line per line what the submission's about, and not just going submission happy, like right. you say all the time. Yeah. 
Um, when it comes to sending a song, uh, I'm a songwriter, and when it comes to sending in a song, like a demo kind of thing, I noticed I got back one, and it was mentioning a lot of production, uh, production things with the song. If it's a song, like a simple demo, does it work to just send something with a simple guitar and you guys look at the lyrics, melody, blah, 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 instead of like a lot of production? You know what I mean? It to read the listing carefully. Um, some listings, actually a surprising number of listings, um, certainly not ones that are looking for stuff to be placed in film and TV, but ones where they're looking for songs for artists on labels to cut. There are yeah. actually a decent number of people that say um, that you can submit a, a very simple piano vocal demo or a guitar vocal demo. Now, that said, Yes, if um, Diane Warren does a piano vocal demo, you can bet that the song is going to be so good and she'll get a demo singer most likely rather than sing it herself, um, that her piano vocal demo would be better than 90% of other professional people's fully produced demos because she writes incredibly good songs. So... It, it depends on the listing. Um, the listing will actually say that it's okay to submit to submit a piano, vocal, or guitar vocal demo. Um, so the listing should say that because if the listing is like looking for a pop song for label and it gives examples of kind of electronic -y stuff or really poppy, you know, um, it's the examples that you're giving, right, that's important to look at. Yeah, and try and triangulate in most, not 100% of all cases, but most cases, it's a pretty good bet that you can triangulate. Look at the three examples and yeah. go, okay, so this artist, that artist, and that artist, what do they all have in common? Well, the beats per minute is about the same. They're all like dancey pop. They are all not very rangy on the vocals, meaning, you know, that they don't have like a three octave vocal range like Mariah Carey or somebody would. Um, so look at the things that are common to all of them. And then as you work on your piece, go, would my piece fit on a playlist with those other things? They're generally not looking for clones. Actually, in most cases, they would fear getting a clone. Uh, but they're looking for something that sounds like, yeah, if an artist who sang any of those three heard this, would they also sing that? Right, so just lastly, so you can get somebody else in, um, should I submit or should we all submit to when it says, like, like guitar or piano, something like that, is that the best way to to be safer and send a song that you're sending it in because it's a good song. You can hear the chorus, you can hear the hook, you can hear the verses, and a good song is a good song. Is it left for interpretation for like someone saying, oh yeah, this is really good with a different track or this and that, or does it have to really sound like very production, high production? Again, the listing will tell you. Okay. Um, if you've got a song that on a scale of 1 to 10 is an 8.2 with amazing production, but your song from a lyric and melody perspective is a solid 10 with very weak production, you may win the day. Okay, okay. That's great. That's the best advice right there. Okay. Thank you. And I watch you all the time. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. Glad to have you as a member and glad that you watch the show. Thanks, Joseph. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. We're four minutes over. My goodness. Um, all right, you guys want to do a couple more minutes so we can all say goodbye to each other for the weekend? Uh, Going to miss you guys on Monday. Uh, but have a great Memorial Day weekend. Um, wear your mask. Apparently touching surfaces. They're now saying that the uh, coronavirus is not easily transmittable by touching surfaces. Tell that to the box of rubber gloves sitting over there on my kitchen counter. Um, and I just want to know, if you can't get it by touching a surface, then does that mean that every one of the 95,000 people who got it and died in America so far, or the one and a half million, or whatever the number is of people who actually contracted it, how did they get it? Because somebody walking in front of them in a grocery store coughed, 
and left some aerosolized crap in the air and they breathed it in? Really? I, I've got to believe that if somebody does that and then touches a railing outside of a movie theater or something and the next person comes up, puts her hand on there and then picks their nose. Just saying, I don't know. I guess the best advice is don't pick your nose, damn it. Um, so that's it. Uh, have a great weekend, you guys. Have a great holiday. Um, I can't tell you what to do, but, you know, take a little moment of silence for uh, our people in uniform who have uh, lost their lives to defend our freedom. And uh, I will see you guys on Avoid Doorknobs. Yes. <laughs> Um, thanks for hanging out with me all week. Sorry for the tech problems. Uh, miss you guys on Monday. See you on Tuesday. See you and the band very soon for another exciting episode of Taxi's Quarantini Happy Hour. Woo!